Welcome to worship with the St. Luke congregation. This is a time for us to reconnect with the holy, to find our way again in the universe, to reconnect with one another as the Spirit gives us, leads us. Friends, I would uh, remind you that we are moving outdoors for worship on May 23rd as we celebrate Pentecost together. We will be gathering in our parking lot by keeping safe the distances and wearing masks, and we hope uh, that you will join us. We will continue to have a virtual worship service online, um, but that will be available to folks after uh, Sunday morning worship. We hope that you'll join us either in our parking spaces or online. Please join with me in the call to worship. We gather to worship the one who crafted creation out of chaos. Our cries of joy join the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to the God who gives us voice. We bring the songs which have echoed in our hearts all week long. We gather as children of God, our joy unbroken in God's love young and old, tone deaf and perfect pitched, to lift a new songs of faith. Let us worship God. God, may we hear your voice in the stillness of night, in clatter of day. You call us and we respond. Here we are. May we follow you and may we love as you love. Holy One, through trials and turbulence, make us steady. Your hands holding the strong, the fragile, and weak. May we love as you love. Gracious God, may the fruits of our lives provide for those in need. Bread, clothing, shelter, fire, water, word. May we love as you love. God of justice, remove the barriers of our lives that keep us from one another. Barriers we construct based on skin color, religion, or gender. May we hear and follow graciously. May we love as you love. Loving God, take this day our fears, our worries, our distractions, and all. 
turn them into grace and mercy, and following the example of Jesus, the disciples, and all your saints. May we love as you love. Amen. As we turn to scripture to hear the words of God for the people of God, let us begin with a prayer for understanding. Let us pray. Compassionate God, all creation comes to life through your word. May your spirit of love bring understanding into our confused minds and truth into our troubled hearts, that we may praise and serve you always. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, as we read again about God creating. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetations, plants yielding seed of every kind, trees of every kind bearing fruit with a seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello to all those young disciples out there. I'm coming to you the, today from uh, my back porch. Uh, you can probably hear the birds uh, chirping in the background. And maybe if you listen really closely, you can hear the ice cream chuck that's going around the neighborhood. <laughs> but I'm glad to be with you today. I was going to talk to you about uh, nature, about God's creation and how we might be friends with nature. But then I was reminded that this Sunday is Mother's Day. And Mother's Day is a particular holiday that we celebrate in the United States to say thank you to our mothers. But it has a little different history than that. Uh, Mother's Day originated uh, with mothers who had lost their children to the Civil War. And uh, they were protesting um, any more wars that would uh, take the lives of young people. And so, in fact, Mother's Day begins as a day of peace, uh, a day protesting uh, violence that would take any mother's children from her. And that got me to thinking about the children that are killed on our city streets and all those mothers that grieve today. It got me thinking about uh, children who are taken by addiction or by suicide. Now, this may be making you very sad, and I don't want to do that. What I want to say is that there's a lot that we can do besides send a card to tell mothers how important they are and how beloved their children are. We can protest violence and we can help people with addictions, and we can talk to our friends uh, who feel lost and unloved. So this morning, as we celebrate Mother's Day, as you say thank you and tell your mother how much you love her, I hope that you'll remember other mothers this day and uh, maybe do something that would be beneficial and helpful to them. Thank you for this time together. Our reading from the Gospel this, this day comes from John, reading in the 15th chapter. Listen for God to speak to you through these words. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in God's love. I have said these things to you so that, you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask in his name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This morning's scripture is a continuing of the conversation Jesus is having with the disciples in the upper room before his own death. He is trying to prepare them for what's ahead and also to remind them of the things that they have learned together, to assure them of the relationship they have with one another and with God. Now, we have been working through a variety of images for our relationship with God and Christ's relationship with God. And we talked earlier about the sheep and the shepherd. We've talked a bit about the vine and the branches. And today, I think John, the Gospel of John and Jesus offer us a new image, a new way to think about our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. When Jesus says to the disciples, I no longer call you servants, but friends. Now, I had an opportunity this week to watch a movie that I had been recommended to me by members of my family and friends, and most recently has won uh, Best Documentary. It's called My Octopus Teacher. It's a beautiful film. If you like the sea and the seashore, you will love this. The cinematography is incredible. But the story centers around the filmmaker, who has been doing this most of his lifetime and has become tired and a bit discouraged and disconnected. And so he returns to his childhood home, this cottage on the beach in South Africa, and he goes out every day into the surf and into the kelp beds to explore. This is a way that he finds himself again, but this is also where he finds his new friend and teacher, the octopus, she. He doesn't give her any name, he doesn't make her a pet, but we begin to see how the relationship develops over time. He begins by being present with her every day. Every day he goes to seek her. And at first she's not always easy to find and at first uh, she's not always obvious. But soon he finds her home and he finds her, her feeding grounds and soon it seems that she is looking for him. Now this may all sound like silliness until that moment when you see the octopus reach out to take his hand. And then later on, to sit quietly upon his chest. He watches her 
for a year. And I want to put a little warning in here that if you watch this with children, there are several very kind of dangerous and fearful moments. And there is also in the end her dying. Her dying because it's the end of her life. A year is the span for this octopus. I don't want to tell you too much about it, but I want to say that what this man discovered and what those of us watching this relationship discover is how it is to be in relationship, friendship, in love with another. It's mutual. He goes seeking her and she comes seeking him. It's about presence and companionship that can be counted on. It's about the blessing that one offers to another. It's about the joy that is celebrated with the other. It is the seeking to know the other in a much deeper, more personal way. It's a curiosity about the other. I think that this relationship between the octopus and the man would tell us something about this friendship that Jesus is calling us to. There are occasions in the movie where I think the man is godlike, in his quiet coming, in his not rushing, his not overwhelming, not overpowering, his reaching out, his wanting for her to be uh, fulfilled in her life. But there are other occasions when it seems like the octopus may be the holy one in the relationship. I'll leave that up to you to discover when you watch the movie. So let's return for a moment to the Gospel of John. Jesus has been talking to his disciples and he's been reminding them that he has a relationship with God that is based on love on love and obedience, on friendship. Jesus is reminding the disciples that his relationship, his love for them, begins with this divine relationship, this divine love. It's the source of his life and purpose. And then he goes on to say that I want you to abide in me, to love as I do, as I have loved the Father and the Father has loved me. This is the relationship I long for you. One that provides us with direction and purpose in life, but one that also brings us joy and blessing, companionship for the journey. One that is about God reaching out to us and us reaching back to God. Jesus goes on to say that the relationship I'm calling you to, the relationship I choose for you, is one of friendship. A friend who would lay down his life for another, as we are reminded of what is ahead for Jesus, and as John's community was reminded of Jesus' own death and resurrection for all of them. Jesus is inviting them to be friends with him in an ongoing kind of way and also inviting them to be friends with one another, loving friends, supportive friends, friends who are remain, abide in the midst of all that will come. I like this image for us as a community of faith because it reminds us that we are called to be companions with each other in this journey of faith, in this journey of life, in this mission that we have as a church. A love that is mutual, a love that is curious and understanding, a love that is faithful and blessed and joyful. 
Now, some might say that maybe the best way to describe the church would be to call us a community of friends, but that name has been taken by other denominations. And perhaps the term beloved community really is the best way to describe our community. But what does that mean for who we are when we gather together and who we are when we serve our community? It calls us to be more than friendly and welcoming. It calls us to invite people into relationship with us into our lives, into our work together. I remember the story of a church that had a meal for the homeless in their community. At first, it was a meal where the church members served, you know, in a cafeteria kind of line, and the homeless grabbed their plates and went and ate and then hurried on their way. The turnover was pretty quick because there were lots to feed. But somewhere along the way, somebody decided that what was needed was more time with each other. So what they began to do was create family tables where the food was set out for folks to share, where the members of the church began to sit with those who came seeking a meal. They began to talk with one another and share their lives with one another and their struggles with one another. And what developed were true friendships. I read this week that the Houston Presbytery has approved a policy of welcome to transgender youth. This was a motion and action that was brought to the presbytery floor, our regional body, or their regional body, by one of their local congregations. To say that we need to do more than just say we're welcoming, we have to find ways to draw these young people into our communities of love and friendship. We have to be curious enough to want to know them and want to know the challenges in their life and want to know the dreams that they have for life. We have to be committed enough to this community of friends, this beloved community that welcomes strangers and outcasts and people who are different and people who are in need. Indeed, This call to friendship with God is the source of all of our friendships in our faith community, in our neighborhood community, in our families, and beyond. It's a friendship that is more than just, I'm glad you're here, but I want to know you. I want you to flourish in life. I want you to have the joy and the blessing. Back to our octopus teacher. The octopus, in the end, must give up her life in order for her babies to flourish. They literally feed on her in her last days. And in that moment, I could see and hear that the that the man was learning something about sacrifice and about the regenerative nature of love. He talks a lot in the film about his new appreciation for the natural world, a deeper understanding for how nature and how, how it is interdependent and more importantly, how it is working uh, for the benefit of all. You see, this friendship we have with God and Christ that we are called to have with each other is meant to be a blessing and a benefit for all. It's meant to be a reaching out, out of that source of love that we have from God 
to one another so others might have life, so others might rejoice, so others might be fed and included. God calls us to be friends. Friends with the holy, friends with creation, friends with one another. Amen. We believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken places of our universe. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide who lives with us eternally. We believe with God that all things are possible and resurrection is real, where all life can be renewed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, and within. God yesterday, today, and forever. The three in one, the one in three. We believe in the power, presence, and purpose of God. As Christ has loved you, so love one another. Abide always, for God is love, and your joy will be made complete. May God give you all that you ask for in Christ's name. May Christ Jesus reveal to you all God's ways of love and friendship. And may the Holy Spirit confirm the truth within you. Go now in peace to love and serve our God with joy. Amen.